Well, thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, uh, for the invite. You know, we are um, with my business partner, uh, Mackay Smith. We're just two, uh, two Isla boys. Well, actually, we're two Isla middle-aged men, really. But Isla middle-aged men doesn't fit so well in the label. So uh, we went for Isla boys. Uh, somebody said that sounds like a kind of uh, a, a, a teenage uh, a band. For, so it's like, oh, shit. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, I'm from Bomore originally, would you believe? Um, born and brought up in Bomore. Actually, technically, I was born in Glasgow because my mother, uh, uh, they thought it was going to be a breech birth. So I was flown off Isla and then flown back after I was born. Um, much to my frustration. Uh, um, but uh, uh, my sisters were born in Bomore, my older sisters. One of them was born in the family house, would you believe? And one was born in the local hospital. Um, we lived in Bamore till I was about 11 years old. And then my family moved to Port Charlotte and they took me with them, which was decent of them. And ever since I've really become a Port Charlotte boy, I think. Um, and on the west coast of Isla, you know, we, we call that the Rins of Isla, the, the Western Peninsula. Uh, um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a Rins of Isla guy, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, Port Charlotte's a family home. Um, my business partner, Mackay Smith, he's an interesting, interesting man. Our families know each other. My father was very involved with the Isla Lifeboat. My father was a frustrated uh, mariner. Well, semi-frustrated. He would have loved to have been a professional mariner, but he was an amateur mariner. Uh, and a, a lot of my youth was spent on the sea. Um, and so I learned to sail with my dad and, and we did lobster fishing. I used to have my own lobster creels, would you believe? Lobster traps, oh, yeah. I guess you call them in the States. Um, and I used to fish for lobster uh, off, off Port Charlotte um, when I was probably about 12, 13 or whatever. Uh, took that home to the house for, for tea, you know, hey, you know. Um, but uh, so he, would, he, would, he was in the local lifeboat committee. In fact, one of his greatest prize for my father, he was, he was deputy launch authority for the Isla lifeboat. And that's serious because that means he could launch on his decision, the lifeboat uh, uh, as required. Anyway, uh, Mackay's grandfather, John Mackay, he was a, 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 a master mariner and he was in the lifeboat committee with my father. So our families know each other. And Mackay Smith, um, my business partner, we're 50-50 in the Isla Boys. So, whoa! <laughs> um, he, he's actually an Isla royalty. I mean, um, his, his, his mother's maiden name's Mackay, his father's name's Smith, of course. Um, but the Mackays of the Rins were vassal clans to uh, the MacDonald clans, the Lords of the Isles. Uh, that there's a whole uh, ream of history there. And my mother was very, very involved with the Finlagen Trust in Isla, which, uh, which talks about the history of Isla, uh, back to Summerland and, uh, or Sorley, uh, the original uh, Lords of the Isles that took the power back from the Vikings uh, using the longboats, of course. Um, and uh, so whenever Mackay would come to the house back in the day, um, she would be really uh, keen on getting the house cleaned and dusted because for her, my mother, my mother, uh, Mackay was Isla royalty. Uh, he was serious Isla. Um, I mean, his ancestors are buried on the, on the island just off, off Port Haven, where he still lives to this day, uh, uh, Mackay, down at the end of the Rins, uh, on Orsett Island, where, where there's a, light, a, big, a big lighthouse. Well, his, his, his forebears are still buried there. So he's, he's ancient Isla, I mean, really way back. Um, so anyway, so fast forward a little bit, this is gonna, otherwise I'll be here for hours, <laughs> you know, but um, fast forward a little bit. Um, and I guess it started off with, um, with really, um, it's, in fact, the, the real story, this is, this is, this is going to leak out, but it, you know, is that Mackay and I, we maintained contact through the years. And, and years ago, um, he asked my advice on, 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 on pre-mixed whiskies, like Rob Roy's or, or, or like pre-mixed whiskey cocktails, which these days actually probably are for some bars, you know, a, a, a done thing. You know, you get, you get a decent uh, pre-mix and, and here you just add ice and, you, and you've got perfect serves. So, so, so for some bars, why not? And he was asking my advice on, 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 on which um, the whiskey blend, well, what I thought of the idea, really, I guess. And back in the day, I, I was, um, uh, um, and still am to a certain extent, a whiskey, whiskey guy in France, of all places. Uh, we're speaking, I'm speaking to you from France, and, you know, it's a long story, guys, but uh, my wife's French, and, 
you know, we call that in Scotland the old alliance between France and Scotland. Well, you know, I, I'm living it, I suppose, a little bit. Um, but anyway, um, so he asked my advice on, 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 on what blend to use. And I said, well, you know, the, the, obviously in, 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 in any cocktail, and I guess you'd all agree with me on this, guys, um, it's like cooking. You know, your ingredients are key. So uh, to make a good whiskey cocktail, use a good whiskey. You know, duh. You know. Um, and he said, well, what, what blend would you recommend as, as a base, you know, for these uh, whiskey cocktails? I said, well, uh, there was a blend I liked back in the day. I don't, don't know if you guys remember this blend called Bailey Nickel Jarvey. It was a blend made by Glenn Morangy back in the day uh, called B&J for short. Um, they don't make it anymore. Uh, it was eight-year-old grain, eight-year-old malts minimum. It was often called the, the, the poor man's the single malt. Um, it was a really good whiskey, uh, as it happens. Um, uh, and I said, well, I would have chosen that blend, but it's dead. They've stopped it. And they've pulled the plug on it because obviously Glenmorangie didn't want to sell eight-year-old Glenmorangie in a cheap blend, you know, or a cheapish blend. And so they killed it. Um, and he said, well, what would you recommend? I said, well, listen, uh, perhaps the best way of doing it is to actually create our own blend and use that. And then we thought, actually, just why don't we just create our own blend and then just do that, <laughs> full stop. <laughs> so that's the start off of flat nose. And flat nose, as opposed to whiskey, um, obviously, you know, we're talking flat nose here. Uh, it's a Viking name. So we're back to back to Lords of the Isles here. Um, and Kettle Bjornsson, who was nicknamed Flat Nose, was a, was a, a Viking um, uh, overlord sent to oversee the islands of Scotland uh, by, by the king of the day. And he turned a little bit renegade and proclaimed himself uh, king of the islands of Scotland. This is the ninth century. Uh, um, so, and his nickname was Flat Nose. I mean, the Vikings went for fairly literal nicknames, of course. You know, Eric the Red was a red kind of guy, you know. Uh, um, and so Flat Nose had a flat nose from all the, all the punching in his face, probably, from all these battles. And that was kind of the start. We wanted to talk about a kind of shared Viking heritage because if, if you look at um, a DNA on Isla, um, you know, uh, if you if you look at it, probably we're half uh, Irish, half uh, half uh, Scandinavian, um, because on an island, of course, you're isolated. Hello, um, and you're kind of like peopled by people who come in on boats. Um, so our genetic heritage on the islands of Scotland is quite different to say mainland Scotland, where you may be a bit more picked. Uh, we are definitely kind of Celto Viking. You know, uh, uh, I mean, Mackay's a big guy. Uh, with red hair, well, it's kind of bald, but there's red bits around the sides. Um, you know, clearly Viking heritage uh, coming through his lineage. That's for that's for sure. Um, I'm grey, so that's not quite the same. <laughs> but back in the day, I used to have a red beard. Would you believe? I'm dark hair and a red beard. It's a really strange mix. <laughs> so I had a question, uh, and sure. I'm not sure. I mean, most of us we we love Isla whiskey, and uh, and but Isla ales. How did that, did you purchase that or was that a recent requisition? Uh, did you start it? Uh, I think this, you know, what we would like to know is what's the connection between flat nose, Isla Ales, and then later on, you know, maybe uh, we get down to talking about your future projects. So what is yes, Isla Ales, what to expect? Because, you know, we are not accustomed to any beer coming out of no. uh, Isla. We well, Isla Isles was actually just a, a kind of a chance thing. Our, our uh, global headquarters uh, for uh, Isla Boys, it was a small shed, uh, 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 was in Isla House Square in, uh, uh, in, in Bridgend and Isla, in the middle of Isla. Um, and that's where Isla Isles is. And we got on, we got on, I'm still doing actually, we got on, got on really well with the, with the owners of back in the day. Um, and they inv invited us on as whiskey guys to their uh, Fish Ilu day, uh, the Isla Fest Whiskey Festival day. Um, so we had our own stand and we were on their day. This is probably going back maybe uh, three, maybe three, four years ago now. Um, and, and, and we said to ourselves with Matt, we'd always said that the brewery was a bit of a sleeping, well, I was going to say sleeping giant, let's but it's not exaggerated. But it was a bit of a, a bit kind of underestimated and under kind of valued and you know, but the guys had had it going, would you believe, since two thousand and four. Um but they were from the Midlands of, of England, um south of the border. Um and and they were they were doing styles of beer that really weren't very modern, I mean, without being without being rude. Uh, and kind of maybe more Midlands England than kind of like islands of Scotland styles of beer. 
So we always felt that there was potential uh, within Isla Ailes and that it wasn't really being realized. And one day they came to us and said, listen, listen, guys, you know, the, you know this year's been hard and, and, and we're, we're getting old and, and, and doing beer, any of you probably, well, most of you all know this, it's, you're, you're, it's a lot of weight. <laughs> you're, you're, you're either lifting bags of barley or, or lifting kegs of beer or, or cases of beer. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of weight. And, and, and these guys have been lugging the, these things around for years. Uh, I think they were tired and, 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 and wanting, a, wanting a change and, and, and wanting to try to keep the brewery going and said, would you two like to buy it? And we thought, well, you know, uh, whiskey is only, you know, distilled beer. Uh, I mean, if we're being crude here. Um, so why not? Uh, that, that, that's, that's the real reason. We were across the road. Um, and so we looked at it and thought, yeah, you know, we, 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 we weren't beer guys. Um, but we thought, you know, yeah, why not? And so we went back to what we did. We, we bought it over. Um, and, um, and we went back to the local community and asked our friends in, our, in the Isla Bars, uh, what kind of beer would they want? I mean, what, what do their customers buy? And that is one of the, I suppose, the cornerstones of what we try to do. It's to sort of try to be like kind of quite humble and, and, and to perhaps not force things on people, but to say, well, you know, what is it that, 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 that you would look for in a, in a whiskey or in a, or in a beer? Uh, and think about that and try and maybe come up with the answer. So we changed, we bought it out in July 2018 um, and probably got our teeth into it a little bit around about the end of the year. Mackay kind of went and did a, did, 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 did a few months working alongside them um, and got to know the process that, of what they were currently doing. And while, we're, and while that was going on, we were looking at how changing the recipes uh, from these kind of slightly strange beer styles um, and packaging too, which is slightly strange. I mean, most people back in the day, guys, on Isla didn't buy them. And I think, you know, uh, Sabine and Reno, you, you'd, you'd agree with that. You know, people on Isla did not buy Isla Ales. I mean, that's a sad a sad fact but it was it was true uh, i mean you know whiskey tourists or general tourists would buy them in the ferry or in a shop because hey it's isla ales why not try one but they would buy one and maybe not buy another one which you know is tricky i mean they were bottle conditioned so they were fragile and, and, and slightly changing and so so we just turned it around and made a lager which a craft lager uh, an ipa not too hoppy ipa but an ipa nonetheless Right. We made, they're, they're behind me, we did a, a, a golden ale, we did a, a, a stout and a red rye ale. So that, that's our core range. And, and so 2019 was a kind of laboratory for us um, to see if, if the local people in Isla, and, and, and that's who we wanted to pitch to, it was not so much, I guess, you guys who might come to Isla, um, um, but actually could we get our, our fellow uh, Elich, uh, which is the plural for an Elich, which is a singular Isla person, would, would, could we get them back on board? Um, you know, one of the things that struck us was that in, in, in Max Bar, uh, Ante Senshi, down in Port Haven, uh, they were selling beers from Sky. You know, like, what, sorry? You know, um, that's like selling Talisker or Isla. I mean, you know, that just doesn't happen. You know, I mean, you know, who, who would drink that stuff? I mean, you know, um, and that really hurt. It did. Um, and, and so, so now, well, now, uh, 2019 was a laboratory. Uh, we did a lot of donkey work. Um, but, you know, some of the guys were so good to us. I mean, some of the bars, I remember uh, Graham in the Port Charlotte Hotel um, across the road from my house um, saying, listen, guys, uh, you have two draft beers coming out, a lager and IPA. I'll take both of them on tap in my bar. And we said, but Graham, you haven't even tasted them yet. You know, I mean, as a bar owner, you've got to taste them first and, and check the prices out. You know, he said, I don't care. Uh, I trust you too. I'll take both of them. And, and that wasn't the only guy who said that. A lot of other people said, listen, we will, we will, we will give it a chance. Obviously, if the beer isn't going to be up to scratch, it's difficult. No, that's that's it's amazing. I mean, so, yeah. uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll get into the ales uh, later if we have yeah. time. I just want to be uh, making good use of the time and uh, yeah. also get a chance to talk about... Uh, so I know you talked about flat nose and how yeah. it came about and you gave us a good history lesson on <laughs> Viking heritage. But what does Flat Nose have? What's your lineup? Uh, do you have single balls? Is there a blend? Uh, what do you have? Do you mind showing us something? I don't. Here's a, a, a small, uh, it's probably, is it? The, the, oh, sorry, the camera's obviously the other way around, so get your mirrors out, guys. But uh, this, is, this, this, is the, the, this is a sample, a sample uh, pack we do. Uh, generally, we do this for the trade. Uh, the idea is that if you're a shop owner and you have sample packs, you can have your customers taste it. And hopefully, we would hope 
that customers would adopt it. I mean, uh, you know, I think we're all agree that, you know, uh, 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 the packaging is one thing, uh, the description is another thing. But what we all want to do, uh, if it's whiskey, beer, wine, food, um, is taste first, uh, you know, and, and then see if we feel that the quality price ratio is appealing. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of alchemy, I guess, you know, for all of us. Um, and what we try to do is, I mean, this is a bit of a, of a, I mean, forgive me, gentlemen, you know, ladies, but we try to be affordable premium. So if you're looking for a quality single malt from Isla, you know, the prices have gone in some cases, you know, quite, quite, quite far. And, and you know, an Isla, a, a whiskey to us is, a, is, a, is something that, you know, we just drink, you know, it's, it shouldn't necessarily always be a collector's bottle for a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. Uh, uh, that, that's fine too. I mean, I, I know, and, and, we, and we all have them, you know. Um, but there should also be room for for kind of like sharing whiskey with friends, and that's kind of where we want to be. So we have um, we have in fact quite range here. We have um, and I'll take the boxes over. Maybe uh, they're lighter than the bottles. I, probably, I might maybe I won't I won't they won't fall down. Um, we have a range. Uh, Donald, you've gone on mute. I think you've pressed the mute button or... And I can unmute it too. I'm back, guys. Sorry, my, my uh, enthusiasm and I'm dropping boxes here. We started off with, um, with the blend, uh, which is... It's a blended whiskey, yeah. But it's unchill filtered. Uh, so you can see me coming here. This is at 43% alcohol. I wasn't really... You know, the, the alcohol degree... Um, I mean, chill, unchill filtered, it had to be unchill filtered. Uh, you know, come on, you know, we all know that chill filtration is going to take away flavor. Well, as Jim McEwen said to me when I was a bit younger, you know, why do we take so much time uh, to put flavor into whiskey uh, um, through, you know, mashing, fermenting, growing bloody barley in the fields, Jesus, uh, 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 aging, uh, distilling, sorry, aging, and then, and then cask assembly, you know, all these people spend a lot of time making sure there's flavor in there to then strip it out just before you bottle it. It's just, it's just seems really strange. I mean, you know, why do we bother? Um, so it's unusual, I guess, to have blends that are unchill filtered. Um, and, and, and to be honest, uh, you know, it's not, it's not, not rocket science. You know, I, I, what you're not doing is taking flavor out of it. And I would probably suggest that a lot of Scottish blends these days, if you actually didn't chill filter them and didn't reduce them down to 40% alcohol, you'd probably find they, they have flavor, um, but just they've been kind of like, you know, neutered a little bit, uh, not to say castrated. Uh, um, so the first blend was unchilled for 40%. Um, oh. and, and then beyond that, we brought out uh, Big Brother. This is a bit more, I don't know, I guess probably what we would probably appreciate. The blend idea was to have a complimentary whiskey, you know, to your single malt. So this is an easy, easier drinking. It's probably going to be a little bit, a tiny bit smoky. I mean, there's Kaulila in there. There's 15 whiskeys. And the Kaulila just probably comes through a little bit uh, uh, in the flavor profile for us. And the brief I actually gave myself and Mackay was, and this is probably maybe a, a bit of a stretch, but the brief was to create a blend that people could step up to from regular blends you know, obviously it's going to be more flavor, that's 43%, and it's not chill filter. Um, and the peatiness just comes through. Uh, but it was also to have a blend that whiskey drinkers, I mean, single malt drinkers could go down to and not be too disappointed uh, from a step down. And that's kind of, maybe it's a bit of a, a big step, but that was kind of the idea. Uh, behind um, that, yep. Question coming in, uh, I'm sorry, sorry yep. to interrupt, but there's a no, question. No, 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 interrupt, interrupt. Yeah, so Alex, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Uh, yourself uh, yeah. come on screen yeah yeah uh, so you know we're all uh, whiskey ner nerds i dare say <laughs> so you mentioned uh, one of the the 15 would you would you be at liberty to share the other 14 whiskeys in the blend other than the kalila and uh, if you get to to talk of the bare legs would love to know what you can share about those as well uh, Alex, it's a it's a tricky question. You know, it's uh, you know the the Scotch Whiskey Association is very very as you know. You know, it's, it's uh, I'm not hiding behind that, but I'm a little bit. But uh, uh, um, but to be honest, it's it's a tricky pro it's a tricky question for us, um, and I'll explain why. Uh, we are tiny people, um, and sourcing our whiskey, a big part of whiskey these days is brand value um, as opposed to liquid value. Um, 
And we saw that with Remy Quantro buying Brufani for what was it, 58 million or something. Uh, and they were buying brands um, and they were buying brand value rather than just stock kind of distillery, which is what the case would have been before. Um, and so people have got really, really edgy about it. So while I know there's County Lynn there, and I, and I, and I also believe, and I'm not going to affirm this on any public forum, but I believe there might well be Bonne Havre and Moitneu, uh, a spirit in there as well. Um, those are the two PT ones that you're generally going to get anyway. You know, let's be honest. Um, to be honest, for the rest of them, I don't want to be specific, but it's also because, Alex, I don't really care. Uh, to me and to someone from Isla, what you, what you get with space, for example, this one coming up is 10 whiskeys, 10 single malts. It's a blended malt. It's a different animal. Um, what I'm looking for from space side is more of a complementary uh, barley sweetness. So I'm not so, and to be honest, and this is maybe a bit harsh on my Speyside whiskey fan friends, um, but I'm looking more for a, a background taste from the Speyside, uh, a background kind of barley sweetness. So I'm not so bothered. And also, Alex, a lot of, and everybody else, our whiskies are all probably a second fill bourbon. Uh, and some of them are probably going to be third fill. Uh, uh, so the wood influence is very, very small. Uh, uh, so you're looking, I'm looking for sweet. Uh, sweet spirit uh, as a counterbalance to the beat uh, uh, and to be honest on a blend a big factor is going to be the grain whiskey uh, we're probably looking at a third roughly malts and two-thirds grain now you know it's, it's a, the, this the blend thing is probably maybe a, a subject for another time because I, I actually love talking about this um, people perhaps erroneously think the more malt you have in a, in a blend the better it is and some blends in fact communicate on that and say 50 percent malt 50% whiskey, you know, grain whiskey. Um, it's not so straightforward, obviously. It's like cooking, and it's an alchemy thing. Uh, but certainly, yes. I mean, if you've got 5% of malts, then you know, we're way off the mark here, you know. Uh, but you'll have a cheap blend in your supermarket. So, you know, it's different strokes of different folks. Um, I would suggest, I, I, I mean, in many ways, I often say that, that, that a blending, a blend is like um, a spaghetti bolognese, where the, the wheat whiskey will be like the pasta. So it's an important part of it. It's, it's, a, it's a uniform taste. It's not going to be, it won't evolve, you know. It's not complex, but it's a necessary uniform taste. And you build flavor on top of that, like spaghetti bolognese, with your rich sauce. And you have meat and tomatoes and onions and herbs and whatever else you have. And to me, that's the single malts. And they're adding all these complex flavors. But it's the balance of the complex flavors with the pasta base uh, that makes uh, the product uh, um, harmonious. And, the, and, and to be honest, the green whiskey acts as a kind of like a mixing factor for the whole thing. Um, and I'm actually a fan, you know, uh, in a blend of, 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 of green whiskey because it gives a, a regular taste. Now, you're not going to get, you know, complexity beyond a certain initial mouthfeel, but you're going to get an easy drink whiskey, an easy drink whiskey, which is fine for pubs, bars, you know, uh, with friends. Where, you know, so I'll not go on too much about the different, different whiskeys, mainly because they can also change Alex. Um, and that's another thing. So you want to have quite a few whiskies in your blend because you might run out of your Glen Murray. You might run out of your Ben Ria. Uh, uh, so so what, you, what, you, what you want to have is, is, is as many components as is reasonable so that if you're missing one of the 15 the next time when it comes to make, to make the next batch up, you still, you know, like I suppose like a cook would, you, just, you still land on a flavor profile that's, that's the same. I mean, I suppose if you look at a blend over over a decade or over probably two decades, then it'll it'll change. You know, there'll be a difference, but it will have evolved. Uh, and batch to batch, it'll be more or less the same. So, so to be honest, I'm not too. This is a bit cruel, <coughs> but not too not too bothered about the space side whiskies. What I'm looking for is a complementary sweetness and barley kind of flavour, which is why I'm not really bothered about the mix and why I'm not bothered about putting all the ingredients in the back of the label because it will change. Um, so if I print out, say, you know, 10,000, 20,000 boxes and I'm bottling 5,000 or 6,000 or 10,000 and suddenly it changes the mix halfway through, oh shit, I have to chuck all these boxes away, which would be a pain as well. Um, but this one is a, a bigger animal. This is, a, this, this, is, this is the one that came, no, sorry, not that one, this one. This is the second one that came out. This is more, I guess, you know, perhaps what we would probably go for, guys. This is 46% alcohol. It's a blended malt, so it's all malt, and it's 10 single malts. 
Um, two from Isla, which make up one third of the bottle, uh, one third, and eight from Speyside, which make up the two thirds that follow on. And the idea behind that was that um, you wouldn't get a, 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 a dominating peat factor. You would get initial peat for sure, uh, quite mouth filling, but not overpowering. And it's not, it's not like I saw John Campbell's uh, uh, um, uh, speech with you guys or interview with you guys last week, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. But um, you know, Lafroy's a big meaty whiskey you know um this is more a way of having having peat but then it can have uh, i guess it evolves uh, and it does evolve into space side sweetness which is what i wanted so you get initial peat but then it kind of like the peat kind of dies away and it reveals the space side barley sweetness behind it um i don't think it's it's it's, it's, it's a great whiskey to share um for people who like a little bit of peat or a bit of peat uh, but prefer having perhaps in terms of length of flavor, finishing off in sweetness rather than finishing off in something that's maybe a little bit more like ash tree-like uh, in the throat. So we started off with the blends and then we deconstructed them into single malts. Uh, so the uh, Bear Legs, which is the single malt range, and this is Magnus Bear Legs, uh, who is a, 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 a Viking king, uh, Magnus IV. Um, and um, he, he was a, a, a wily man and he uh, um, was called Bear Legs because he wore the kilt in Scotland. And so his legs were bare. Uh, you know, the Vikings, you know, simple nicknames. Um, and this is an, an Isla single malt. And this is one of the two that go into this. <laughs> and all I can say from that is it's Eastern Isla. <laughs> uh, uh, and I can't say much more because if these guys cut off our supplies, we're stuffed. Um, no, we don't want them. We don't want and to be them. honest, yes. you know, you know, even these days, guys, legally, I actually don't know what it is. I mean, obviously, morally, I kind of have my ideas. But, but legally, I don't know, because uh, when we get the casks, um, um, the, the paperwork is, it says Isla single malt heavily peated, and that's all it says. So uh, the idea is that I can't then say if I bottle it, because that's meant to go in my blends, right, uh, this one. Uh, I'm not meant really to bottle it as a single malt, so, you know, hey. um, but, but because I don't know legally what it is, I can't then put in the bottle what it is um, because I, don't, I haven't been told uh, legally. So I, I could be sued and I would lose it. I would also lose the contract, which would be a, would be a, a nightmare as well. Um, and then we kind of came out with another one, which is this one, which is a Highland peated whiskey. Now, the peated whiskey in the Highlands, there isn't that many. So, you know, you can kind of like probably work it out for yourselves. It's a very, very light peat, probably about 15 ppm. It's a very gentle peat. And the idea for that one was, again, it was, it's one of the whiskeys that goes into this one, uh, Alex. It's one of, the, one, of the, one of the 15 whiskeys in here, one of the 13 malts, uh, two grain whiskeys. So one of the 13 malts. And it's a great whiskey for blending because for not much volume, you get a lot of flavor, which as a blender, that's got to be good uh, uh, because what you want is bang for your buck in a blend and this one does it but it, what I liked about it the lot uh, the most was the nose in it the nose is fantastic and it's got a peat that's not so much a dominating factor but more a it's more an indicated factor of the of the flavor profile itself so it's like it kind of like sewn into the flavor profile difficult to just describe but a very gentle peat a very very maybe a pre-dinner peat uh, I guess I'd call that um, and we just brought out this one this is a fun whiskey, you know, um, um, and also helps fill maybe a price point if we're looking at the business side of things uh, in our range. This is our blend, uh, uh, the first one, but simply with seven to eight months extra aging in South American rum barrels. Uh, uh, and Alex, I can hear you're going to come here. And what rum is there I don't know. And why don't I know? It's because I source my barrels from Space Side Cooperage like, like John does for his quarter casks for Lafroy. Except that, you know, when John sources his casks, he's buying, you know, probably, you know, I don't know, 500, 1,000, I, I don't know. Uh, I bought 20. Um, so, you know, when I said to the guys, so, so guys, you know, where are they from? He said, listen, Donald, you know, you're getting in for not much money. You know, don't hassle us on, on where it comes from. So I said, oh, okay, sorry. You know, <laughs> uh, um, but, you know, having said that, uh, having said that, I quite like the idea of doing a collaboration uh, with a rum distillery at some point um, and actually, you know, co-branding. Co co well, telling the rum distillery story as well. Um, and of course, you know, a rum finish on a blend, you know, we're, we're talking easy drinking here obviously you know um it adds of course you can hear me coming here it adds kind of demerara you know sweet notes the whole thing it's a very uh, easy whiskey to adopt uh, and for perhaps 
whiskey, you know, people are just initiating themselves to whiskey perhaps. Um, it's an easy flavor profile. Uh, and, 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 and lots of people do it. You know, I mean, uh, inspiration for us for that would probably be Teeling, a small batch in Dublin. Uh, you know, they do a great uh, rum finish. Probably their, their whiskey being Irish and the rum being very, very, it's an, a long aging process. The rum kind of like maybe overwhelms. Well, no, sorry, I'm being a bit rude. The rum uh, perhaps is an equal partner in the flavor process there. Whereas for me, I'm a whiskey guy from Scotland, from Isla, you know. So for me, it's got to be whiskey first and the cask has to be maybe a secondary kind of flavor profile. So it's whiskey initially, but then you go, oh, what's that? The little sweetness behind it. So it's whiskey in a rum cask and not, not the other way around. <laughs> nice, nice. So uh, thanks for giving us that background. I think that's uh, very helpful. And uh, we got one more question uh, sure. coming in and we'll take that question, a quick response. And then I want to talk to you about some of your work at Brooklyn and, uh, and with Jim McEwen. And after that, we'll kind of segue into uh, your future project. And so, uh, so the question is coming in from Simon B. Simon, if you want to unmute and come on uh, line and ask your question, uh, you're more than uh, welcome to do so. If you cannot, for some reason, I'll go ahead and ask your question. I'm un unmuted. Oh, there you go. That's, I didn't even recognize that's uh, our own Simon Brooking. I, I thought there was some strange person, Simon B. Who could it be? He is a very strange person. Thanks for having me today, Tim. Um, Donald, um, exciting project. Um, really looking to the contributions to the uh, long history. I'm wondering where Flat Nose falls within the blended Isla category. I'll take my, the answer offline. Uh, Donald, you're mute. We see you with your mute. Yep. You're on and it's my, it's my, it's my mouth, mouse here. The whiskey, the boxes fall on it and mute it, which is you know, maybe a good thing. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but no, Simon, yeah, the, the, um, it's not blended Isla, uh, that's for sure. Um, in our range, if you want uh, an Isla, then it's going to be the Bare Legs Isla, which is obviously a single malt. So it's a young single malt, by the way. This is like probably six years old, this one, this batch. It's second full bourbon. Um, so again, the wood influence is, is, is probably doing what the wood should do, uh, gentlemen, uh, ladies, uh, which is to say it's just showcasing the spirit. You know, I'm from Isla. You know, um, you, know you grow up in Bamor and you go to Bamor uh, uh, school, but I went there from primary all the way through to high school, uh, so from age five to 17, and you go up. Uh, school Street to go to the school. Surprise! And guess what? You go along. You go. You go. You go uh, uh, alongside Bomore Distillery, and you know as you go to board up the, up to the school, you're learning the process despite yourself. Um, and 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 what do we use now? That well, you know, generally for for peated spirit, I would recommend second fill bourbon cask because what you want to taste is not the wood. You know, um, if you want sherry whiskey, then you know Space Side's full of that because it gives flavour to what would otherwise be rather insipid spirit. And uh, uh, <laughs> that's a bit cheeky. But, you know, uh, um, so, so I, for me, uh, I grew up with like hogsheads and I, you know, uh, refill hogsheads. So, so the wood influence is going to be, you know, very, very small. And that's fine, I think, if you've got peated spirit. And to me, in the same way, perhaps, you know, here in France, uh, wine, the flavor of wine should be the grape and the wood that it's aged in should enhance that flavor rather than dominating it. I think the same thing for whiskey. You know, the wood should be just kind of like polishing off perhaps the spirit, you know, uh, rounding off the edges, you know. And if you, if you taste that one, or, or I mean, I, I'm not trying to shamelessly plug this. It, it's hardly available for sale anyway. Um, but at six years old, it's not in any manner or form, I don't think, uh, too young. Um, it's just been polished off enough and what it's got though it's got peat freshness uh, which I think is fantastic and you can taste the barley um, you, know, you can really really taste the barley which is which is another thing I, I think is great because you know whiskey is a bit barley um, barley and perhaps peat smoke if you're from Iowa um, and the wood should just be enhancing those and, and and kind of like presenting them better I guess so so Simon Simon it's probably a bit of a long answer there um, I quite like the idea of an Isla blended malt. Um, 
Although I guess what's going to happen with Isla Blade and Malts, unless you've got access to Bonner have an unpeated spirit, um, and you, because you won't get any of Brew Clarity unpeated spirit because they don't sell it to anybody, um, then you're going to have a kind of like, you know, smoke domination, um, which I think might be kind of like tricky, uh, to be honest. What I like about, um, I like about this one, and, and it's my baby, so I'm going to like it, um, is that the fact that you're mixing Isla with Speyside gives you the chance uh, to to have the peat express itself either a little bit or a little bit more or a lot, you know. Um, and the space it acts as a nice foil to it to me. Um, if it was all Isla, it would just become another kind of like Isla single malt blended malt. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it would add anything to people's flavour journey uh, from a Culhoman, from a you know a Port Charlotte, a Lafroig, or, or an Alaguil itself. That's just my point of view though. Uh, uh, and each each to their own. No, no, no. That that's uh, yeah. Thanks for giving us uh, the background on that. And you know, one thing I'm realizing, Donald, with you is, especially with your descriptions of uh, the spaghetti bolognese, uh, you, <laughs> make, you make us hungry and also want us to drink at the same time. And that's not fair. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, yeah. The there's one question. Quick answer, and then we move on, and because I want to make good use of the time here, is the rum finish on the market yet, and I don't see it on your website? Is the question coming from Charlie Cave? If I'm mispronouncing your last name, I'm sorry. Coming in from Charlie. So is, uh, it, is it on the market? Yes, no, well, kind of yes and no. Um, the problem we have, and this is great, because um, uh, uh, I'm kind of hoping we can maybe, uh, um, I don't know, uh, interest perhaps uh, uh, some other countries into, into, into getting in touch and, and, and checking us out. Um, we're not well distributed. Um, to be honest, there's just me and Mackay, we're, 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 we're friends before being business partners. Uh, but I, I always think that like in a couple, uh, it's good if you bring complimentary you know, things to that couple. Uh, Max got very, very good uh, uh, business knowledge. Uh, he's the guy with the MBA. He's the guy with international business experience. I'm more of a, a kind of whiskey, you know, uh, a kind of geek, I guess, you know. Um, but um, it was only two of us. And um, last year, we kind of spent a lot of time in the brewery, let's be honest. And we maybe didn't do as much of the, of the, of the getting new markets on, on, on board for the whiskey as we should have done. This year, of course, well, we're all kind of like, uh, we're all a little bit... Uh, uh, gobsmacked with the uh, coronavirus um, so the answer to that is it's available but I think at the moment only in France um, mainly because I think it might be available in Denmark it m m m m m m might be available in, uh, 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 in the Netherlands um, we are currently negotiating or well quite far down the line with Shand Import in the States uh, for an American pre North American presence um, of course you know the coronavirus thing it's not helping anybody. Um, interestingly, though, uh, I'm going to blow our own trumpet a little bit. Uh, we, uh, our American um, potential importer, and this is a guy called Peter Curry from who works in, uh, for Shannon Import. He used to work for Springbank in Campbelltown, so I know the Springbank guys very well. I knew him from then back in the day, and now he's living in California. Can you imagine? You've gone from Campbelltown to California. I mean, living the dream, guys. You know, uh, uh, but but anyway, he's. Uh, he, he, he said, listen, guys, you know, for, for North American uh, credibility, it'd be good if you had uh, a, a medal or at least entered into the uh, San Francisco uh, uh, World Spirit Competition. Um, and so we did. Uh, we put the blend in and, and the blended malt. Um, and the results are just out. Um, and I mean, I'm, you know, quite surprised here. And maybe I've read it wrong, but uh, I believe um, this got a gold. Uh, and it got an IWSC uh, silver outstanding which is actually not so bad uh, for me. Silver Outstandings is, is good. And IWSC is, is a good competition, a bit like the San Francisco one, because it's blind tasting. Um, so it's not brand influenced, you know. Uh, I mean, if McCallum are paying for your competition, they're going to get platinum, you know, come on, you know. Uh, <laughs> so we're little guys. But this one, this got, would you believe, and I'm, you know, I'm still not absolutely sure I can believe the results, but this got double gold uh, just out. So uh, it got silver before at IWSC, and that's double gold. So we're kind of hoping, while I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like all of us here, medals, you know, you know, you're kind of wary of medals. 
Uh, but some of them are good medals, though, and some of the competitions are good. Uh, and certainly that should help us maybe get better visibility and help us maybe attract potential importers and distributors to maybe knock on our door and say, hey, guys, you know, uh, uh, why not? And we do think that we could sit well in a portfolio be below, below the big boys, you know, uh, in terms of price. And perhaps, well, you know, I was going to say in terms of expectations, but I'm not going to say that because I actually think that this... Um, you know, for its price is good whiskey, um, and it's a lot cheaper than a, than, a, than a single malt because it's a blended malt, and, and and you know, and by its nature, it's going to be cheaper because I'm not saying what's in it, you know, so I'm not paying the brands, and you know, so that, that the, the reason for that too. Um, but but bang for your buck, I think it's reasonable, you know, I'll, I'll say no more. I mean, obviously, I'll put the judgment. So, the simple answer is it took about half an hour for this answer, but <laughs> it's 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 available that I'm finished in France, um. And we hope as we pick up distribution, then obviously, you know, we would hope our partners, whoever they might be, would taste and, and adopt if they feel the product is, again, on a quality price ratio that, that, that they think the customers would go for. Uh, no, that's good. Uh, you actually answered a couple of my questions in there too about distribution and availability yeah. of it in the US. So now we know where you are with that and the fact that you got double gold on. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Good. I'm amazed. To be proud of, yeah. So yeah, um, moving towards now, I know yeah. we have uh, our audience here and uh, people have tuned in and we want to talk about uh, Lagan Day. Like, yeah. what's your favorite project? I mean, what got me excited was there is an investment opportunity yeah. for others to join in, be a part of your founders club. And what, yeah. how do you do that? How can we... The well, listen, guys, you just put your money in an envelope and send it to me and just don't worry about the rest. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, yes, I'll go off on a fact-finding tour to the Bahamas for two months, but you don't worry about it, you know? Uh, no, I'm joking. I will. I'll just like, yeah, if you could just talk to us about when can we expect this yeah, to the theory. Yeah. Jokes theory. joking apart. Uh, to answer your question, the, 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 the obvious answer is um, if you're making beer... Um, then, you know, the simple answer is to that is to put a still behind your, you know, your, your fermenting vessels and distill what you're fermenting. Um, as we all know, um, um, whiskey is just distilled beer, uh, essentially. Um, and as brewery owners, we have the equipment to do the mashing, the uh, uh, fermenting, um, and we just don't have a still to put behind it. Um, and also another reason behind the thought process was that uh, our whiskey brands, if we could use our own spirit in our own brands, that would lower their price point. Make, uh, we, and in fact, we would become our, our own biggest customer uh, for our existing ranges. I mean, if we are selling a, a Bear Legs Isla single malt, well, why not put our own single malt into that um, at some point? Uh, particularly as we're talking, you know, whiskey that's maybe, you know, five or maybe six, but certainly, you know, five, six, seven years old, uh, refill bourbon casks, you know, uh, peated spirit, you know, that, that, that seemed to be a, make, make sense. And also because um, the brewery is too small. I mean, Sabine and, and Rainer know very well. The brewery is literally, it would fit probably, well, maybe not quite in, 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 in my office here, but, but not far off it. It's, it's, it's a very small brewery. And uh, we are limited uh, in our growth. For example, Isla Ales, you know, which we think are, are, can, could, could potentially be appealing, particularly to our, if we're talking business here, uh, to our distribution partners. Um, you know, we, we sell our whiskey in over a thousand shops in France, and a lot of them have said to me, uh, Donald, can we sell your beer? And, I, and I'm saying, well, no, you can't because we can't make enough. We only supply Isla and Jura, so we do do export. Uh, <laughs> not very far, <laughs> but we go to Jura. Um, but you know, we're limited by the size of the brewery. So we need to have a bigger brewery anyway. That's the first answer. We need a bigger brewery. So having a bigger brewery, I'm sorry, guys, I'm going to stick to stills to the end of that brewery and distill peated spirit. I'm going to do it. Uh, 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 and I'm going to put it in bourbon casks and I'm going to let it lie there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to age my beer in whiskey casks. And then I'm going to age my whiskey in beer casks. Uh, 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 and, and so if you look at it from, a, from purely a practical point of view, it makes complete sense. And there's another argument, uh, which as future investors, I would like to share with you, <laughs> which is if you're going to build a, a, an integrated brewery and distillery, it actually makes a certain amount of sense. Uh, uh, if only because there's an awful lot of synergies there in terms of material. You can use the same mash tun. 
You can use the same fermenting vessels. You can use the same steam generating plant. You can lose the same workforce uh, to produce simultaneously, or rather, perhaps not simultaneously, but certainly consecutively, uh, 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 spirit and beer. Um, and, and to us, it just makes sense. Uh, it also allows us to be perhaps a little bit different um, and not go down the road. And, and don't get me wrong, I think what Ardenaho have done in Ireland with their new distillery is spectacular. Um, but, you know, um, it's, it's cost them a fortune to do that. Um, you know, they have the pagoda roof thing and all that. I mean, there's no malting floor there. So the pagoda, pagoda roof is, is, is pure decoration. Now, that's, that's lovely. Um, but that's just cost you money for, for, for no real reason, you know. So I am not going to do that with my money. And I'm not going to do it with yours. I am going to build, sorry, gentlemen, ladies, I'm going to build a shed. Sorry, it's going to be a shed. Uh, it's a brewery, you know, it's a shed, you know. Uh, uh, it's going to have a concrete base, a forklift in one end, <laughs> you know, uh, um, big bags of barley, and out the other end is going to flow beer and slash or whiskey. And rum too. Uh, I am going to put, well, me and Mikhail have thought this through. We, you know, we have to generate revenue because we won't have a lot of capital. Um, and, you know, I'd, I'd rather be capital light uh, 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 because I think um, if we can lower the, the, the price point of the cost of production um, and the overall cost of the, of the unit, then that makes sense for any of our shareholders, including ourselves. Um, and so I'd like to make rum, um, mainly because I find that insolent. And I also think that if you've got a still, if you've got double still set up, um, what we're looking at is putting a column still between the wash still and the spirit still. So again, you're doing campaign distillation or campaign brewing. So when we're using the mash tun and the fermenter vessels for the beer, we will uh, do a molasses based mash in a dedicated vessel. This is using molasses from, from uh, UK uh, sugar suppliers. And we'll run that through the wash still into the column still, which will rectify it right away. And we'll produce uh, a, a, a white rum, which can then be, um, uh, we can make a spice drum with that, which is essentially, you're probably fully aware, all of you, that that's essentially a, 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 a new rum, uh, a white rum to which we can add caramel coloring, a mix of spices, uh, maybe, you know, some Isla kind of flavoring, a little bit of smoke, I don't know, and have a market ready product right away. And we can also lay down some rum in, in, in ex bourbon barrels. Um, and again, the whiskey can age in rum barrels and the rum can age in whiskey barrels and the beer can age in the rum barrels. So going forward, it's only going to be a small amount of production. To me, it's more about being cheeky. It's more about attracting interest. It's more about uh, uh, getting people to say, what the hell's going on here? What are these guys doing? You know, a bit like Octomore back in the day for Brooklady in a very, very small scale. You know, I mean, I'm not that pretentious. Um, so that's the plan. And, and Lagan Bay is, um, is at the airport of Isla. It's actually, it's already an industrial estate. It's, uh, the area is already, already has a seafood uh, factory on there. Uh, dealing with Isla Seafoods. There's a big, Isla's biggest uh, car dealership is there as well. Um, it's flat land um, and it's in between, well, it's right at the door tip of the airport. Uh, so perfect for a flight of beer. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but essentially it's, 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 it's already a land that's uh, okayed for um, industrial use. And it's also, and it's important to us too, it's quite far away from the villages. So you're not getting in any, anybody's way you're not getting in the way of somebody's view. You're not, you're not spoiling anything. You know, it, it, there's a clab factory behind it for Christ's sake. You know, so a big shed there, there's a builder's merchant next to it. So another big shed isn't going to look ugly. You know, it, it'll be fine there, um, which is important for us too. Um, so we've got an option on that site uh, already. So we're, we're quite, we're quite far down, uh, down the road. Obviously the coronavirus has come along guys. What can I say? Um, so we are currently finalizing the business plan. We're going to get a value put in our company. And what we're intending to do, and this is all kind of conditional now, so don't maybe you know, hold me to this. But initially when we offered the, the, the deal, we offered a cask and equity um, uh, and asked people to invest £10,000 in it. Now that was a lot of money. And um, we probably got it wrong uh, to a certain extent. We got, we got people on board for that. Um, but to be honest, we irritatingly, 
and you know mea culpa you know you know I, I think I make mistakes you know we all do I, I make lots of mistakes you know Jesus you know um, I think most importantly it's important to learn from that so we're looking at this now and saying listen let's separate the cask buying thing maybe that's good for whiskey groups or whiskey clubs to buy a cask of whiskey you know and even for some individuals you know to buy a cask of whiskey or a cask of rum uh, you know depending on how you feel about it but perhaps what most people would want to do is invest in equity so we're now separating that and we're saying listen you don't have to buy 10 shares maybe just buy one share and what we're hoping is that we'll get a price point on that that will be a few hundred pounds uh, for that one share and obviously you can buy 10 20 50 a thousand, you know, uh, uh, depending on how, how deep your pockets are and how and how far you believe and trust us. Uh, and, and obviously there's a business plan with this, guys. I mean, you know, it's not just me saying this. There's a business plan that we are having, we'll have uh, 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 looked at by our chartered accountants who will then rubber stamp it as being a fair, uh, a, a fair basis. But what we want to do is make it affordable for people from Ireland. Because what we want to do is have maybe guys and girls that are maybe in their 20s, you know, uh, starting out in life, um, don't have much capital to invest, but want to have a stake in something on their island. And we want to say to them, well, listen, you know, for Christmas, buy your boyfriend, buy your girlfriend, buy them one share, you know. You know, it's, it's the price of an iPad, you know. Um, you know, buy them one share and they be holders. Now, it's probably more of a fun thing than anything else, you know. Uh, um, but that, that that's the idea. And of course, as we go through that, you know, that people become founder shareholders. And, and, and again, that's important to us because what we want is people are people on board, like, you know, we're just two guys, you know, um, what we want are people on board to be brand ambassadors for the company. So what we would hope is that, you know, people who invest would become involved in it and implicated in it and, 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 and would promote the beer and the whiskey and, and, and the rum, you know, if we get there, you know, and, and so that gives us a kind of like, you know, a, a, sales force if you like um across the globe um so that that's the kind of plan and um, we're probably looking at depending how, how things evolve you know we're all in the same boat and um, if things do calm down then we're probably looking at uh, doing a launch uh, a kind of second phase a second phase launch probably september october november end of the year um uh, and we'd look to crowdfund that probably um so of course i'll you know i'll i'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep everybody posted on that this is it's vital for us and what we're trying to do um, and this is kind of important to us, is we're trying to remain the majority of shareholders. Um, we're trying to control our own destiny. And, and, and if people invest in, beside us, then you invest also in, 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 in this and this and, and, uh, and the beers too. We bring all that to the party. You know, that, that's part of what we bring. Um, but, you know, we are staking our uh, uh, future on that too. And, and, and we can't, you know, well, we can bugger it up. I mean, but, but we don't tend to because, you know, for me and Mackay, this is our future as well and our, maybe our children's future. So it's important to us that we retain, we retain uh, independence. I mean, as you all know, Island Destroyers, are, they're, and, and they're great, and, you know, and, and, but they're all owned by these huge big, you know, uh, uh, companies. And even the ones that are new that are coming along, you know, potentially we're looking at Sukinder Singh from the Whiskey Exchange coming along. But, you know, there's very few um that are actually run uh, and owned by by people from isla which does seems quite strange but there you go whiskey world big business no 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 donald that's a great point i think uh, you and i chatted about it that it being yeah. an isla owned uh, that brings a totally different uh, uh level of involvement you know just from that perspective being a local and owning it so we've got a question again. Uh, Simon, do you want to come on in or, here and ask your question? Or, because I don't think it was addressed in the beginning about the construction. Fire ahead. Simon, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, yeah. You're online, Simon. <laughs> here we go, Donald. Uh, well, actually, I was just, I think you might have answered most of it, but just the choice decision in uh, the location. And um, do you see a... a um, a mid-island influence in terms of the way the whiskies are produced and mature uh, in in your proposed location. It's it's a good question, Simon. Um, to be honest, on Isla, um, uh, uh, and actually, it's actually fairly uh, fairly well. It's not well known, but actually, we we did this dance, me and Mackay, uh, a few years back with a big investor who wanted to 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 build a distillery uh, on Isla. Um, in the middle of Isla um, with us uh, and it didn't, it didn't work out, it nearly did but it didn't quite, I, we were actually a bit uncomfortable because we were going to be minority shareholders and 
it just didn't sit too well with us, I guess. But, but anyway, it didn't, didn't, didn't come through. But to answer the question more precisely, Simon, um, I'm a, a fan in terms of style. Um, and I think you touched on this uh, thing a, little, a minute ago. But um, I learned to make whiskey with Jim McEwen in Brooklady. And, and I'm from Port Charlotte, you know. Uh, the, 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 the warehouses of Port Charlotte are actually, for Port Charlotte Spirit, are actually next, next to my parents' garden. Um, up the back of Port Charlotte, I don't know if you guys know Port Charlotte very well, but it's it's, it's, a, it's a kind of like you know it's a cutesy by village. I mean, it's Isla's probably prettiest village, and I, you know, and I, I certainly say that. Um, but the gardens are behind the village in a kind of patchwork, and each garden you have to go up a path. It's a raised beach thing, and you have to go up this path, and each garden belongs to each house down in the village. Um, so it's a funny kind of thing, you know. And, and as a kid, my parents were really really keen gardeners, and um, up at the garden all the time, you know. Uh, and we, we used to have fish and chips, and the fish and chips was mackerel that I'd caught out in the bay that my mother would roll an oatmeal and fry in a pan and the chips were potatoes from the garden that she just fried in, in, in a chip pan and would give them out the window to me when I was playing outside in the summer in a newspaper that was my fish and chips you know hey you know, would pay a lot of that money for that now uh, but there you go but you anyway, know the gardens at the back it looks on the Port Charlotte uh, warehouses and and to be honest I'm a big fan to, to just to get around to that Simon, I'm a big fan of the West Coast peat flavour. I, I, I'm a big fan of um, the peating levels in Colhomon, uh, and probably my favourite whiskies island. I think we maybe mentioned this of, are, are some of the Port Charlottes. Um, the Port Charlotte Isla Barleys, I think, are, are really good. Um, and as I, I kind of like a, a more gentle, and maybe John from Lafroy will probably you know uh, take exception with this, but I think the, the kind of West Isla, East Isla, you know, I think West Isla, the peating levels are maybe a little bit more subtle. Um, so to, to, to answer your question, I mean, I'd probably go for a, a, a medium peat uh, level. That would be my, be my, be my, be my, my uh, ideal peating level. But having said that, um, I think what, what uh, I intend to do, um, and this is a discussion for our shareholders, but is to produce uh, perhaps, well, of course, heavily peated spirit and to produce uh, unpeated spirit and perhaps to blend both of them uh, after aging uh, uh, and to reach the phenol levels that, the, the, you know, to maybe reach different phenol levels, actually, you know, uh, by doing that. Uh, so to have your really, really peaty whiskey and then to perhaps reduce that peat level down using unpeated spirit from the same stills uh, 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 and to, to have different peating levels on different expressions, I think that would be a good, a good way to go, uh, personally. Um, and we would age uh, uh, at, uh, at the location um in the plans there's a, a there's 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 quite a lot of room up, up the back uh, uh, uh there it turns out it used to be old army quarters the the isla airport was um a military airport the second world war and across from it there's an awful lot well they're all destroyed now it's nissen huts and um, but the 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 army put down or the air force put down an awful lot of foundations uh, opposite so there's an awful lot of old concrete foundations uh, very very thick concrete they didn't spare money back in the day uh, um, and it goes quite far back so there's quite a lot of area up there for for, for warehousing for future warehousing um and so what is good about lagging bay is that you are opposite i mean literally lagging bay you can see it it's very low lying ground uh, for those that know where the airport is it's very low lying i mean you're, you're just above sea level not very much above it um but you've got rolling uh, atlantic uh, in there uh, and we're probably about i would say probably about a mile at most from the from uh, from the sea where we are uh, where the site is which is fantastic um and obviously uh, 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 for me you know and uh, john was saying this last week you know um if you want to make, uh, uh, if you want oxidation uh, to happen in your whiskey, um, and you do uh, with the angel shear going out of the cask, then you want that to happen in Isla, uh, so that the cask breathes the same air as us, so that it breathes in that, that, that salty uh, maritime air. Uh, so yes, I think the location's actually a very good location. And just to finish on that, it's a tricky one, because Isla is a tricky place to build. I mean, Sabine and, and Wayne will know this too, um, because it's you know, a, lot of that, a lot of Isla is conservation island, and which, is, which is normal, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I think it's very important. We don't want to have big skyscrapers on the coastline. I mean, you know, we want to have a, a, a kind of fairly gentle development on Isla. Um, and, and, and clearly, you know, I mean, these are people I grew up with and people, you know, that I live with. I, I, we can, you know, run roughshod over people's feelings about, about what we do uh, and where we do it. Uh, so to get a good site like that is not so very easy, uh, believe you me, because you need water, 
You need access to roads, you need access, I mean, look at Arna Ho. Uh, they are on the road to Bonhaven, quite far up it. They had to add in passing places on this single track road. You know, I mean, each passing place is probably going to be, I don't know, guys, 50 grand. I am not going to spend 50 grand of your money on building passing places because I haven't thought that through. You know, uh, uh, oh, sorry, guys. Um, could I get our check, please? You know, no, uh, we're on the main road. Now, that is perhaps, it's very boring, but having instant access to a main road with a, 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 a maintained, uh, council maintained uh, uh, access road up past the site, right past the site, those might sound very boring and dull, but let me tell you, those are fantastic details. No, no, that's great, great background and uh, good to know. I. You know, some of us who are not in the industry would not know how the location could make a difference. And, you know, yeah. and that, yeah, that, sure. that is great. But going back, I, I want to go back to, I got excited when you talked about those uh, affordable shares. You know, many of us, uh, at least I, I know myself, you know, don't have deep pockets, but would love to uh, stake a claim in uh, or have a claim in one of the Isla distilleries, especially if it's locally owned and operated by, you know, someone who's from Isla. So where do you, how, one question is uh, where, where do we go and find this information? How do we sign up? Like, how do we be, uh, give you the money and have that uh, share being purchased by us and like what's that process looking like is that going to happen in the future or are we looking at something which is already in place and maybe we haven't looked at it no yeah, yeah well yes and no um no, I mean, to be honest what we're now looking at we, we kind of launched a prospectus back in the day uh, uh and kind of hoped that word of mouth would suffice and to be honest you know we're just two guys and our distribution isn't yet global by a long chalk i mean it's we're probably selling maybe about half a dozen countries, so we've got a long way to go. Um, and we were a bit over optimistic that word of mouth would do the trick. And, and you know, it's one thing to invest, in, I don't know, in, in Rosebank or in, in Arnaho or, or with Brew Claddy or probably even with Mark Rainey in Waterford Distillery in Ireland. Because that, that, these people have got track records and, you know, they've done successful things and they're very audible and visible. People know all about them. We're just two guys, you know. Um, and, and nobody knows it. So, so it was in, inaudible. So we've, re, we've, we've gone back and looked at that. And we're careful that we have to do something that uh, works from day one. So what we're currently looking at is crowdfunding. Um, now, ideally, we would like a crowdfunding platform that would be multinational or transnational. Sorry, maybe that's the better word. Better word. Um, and for them, and it's entirely normal, uh, you have to do due diligence uh, uh, for like on your project, which is, you know, thank goodness. I mean, for potential investors, I mean, thank goodness that this, this, this exists, uh, yeah. so that you can show to their accountants uh, that what you're proposing uh, uh, is legitimate. Um, it may not work. I mean, you know, every investment is, I guess, you know, a, a risk. Um, but what they're saying is, yes, your hypotheses hypotheses are, are uh, stand up to financial analysis. Uh, so we bring in current business that we're doing, we bring in growth that we're doing, we bring in projected growth, we bring in the costs, we bring in the still costs, the, the building costs, you know, whatever it might be, and we build a business plan that we've, that we've built. Um, so we're just kind of like tidying that off. And we're going to submit the building business plan to, we're waiting for some of the quotes actually, that, that, that's why we haven't quite finished it off uh, from third party suppliers. And we, we want to use where possible, and I don't think I'm giving away anything particularly uh, um, uh, unusual here, Scottish uh, copper stills, if we can. Uh, uh, we, we don't want to, you know, reinvent the wheel here. You know, I mean, if I'm going to be doing double distillation, it's going to be in copper pot stills that ideally are made in Scotland uh, uh, with a clean shape. And, you know, I would probably say, I wouldn't copy, copy would be a dangerous one. But, you know, take inspiration from Brooklady stills. You know, I'm a big fan uh, of the narrow necks. I'm a big fan of tall stills. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan uh, uh, of copper contact and the spirit. And of course, if we're looking at, say, you know, under 50,000 uh, LPA capacity, which is quite small, I mean, it's, 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 an, it's, a, ah, it's big enough, you know, shit, got to sell the stuff. Um, it's maybe a, 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 um, a kind of Colhoman equivalent. I mean, the, the old Colhoman, they just, they just doubled their capacity, but the old Colhoman equivalent. Um, 
and you know, the smaller the still, you know, the, the more the contact uh, with the copper is there. You know, it's like uh, John's quarter casks last week. You know, the smaller the cask, well, the, the better the, the, the wood spirit ratio. Uh, and the same for a first uh, um, But to go back to that, um, we're going to go through a due diligence process with the crowdfunding uh, organization that we, that we select. And once that's done, then we, you know, we put the pedal to the floor and there'll be, it'll be, it'll be launched through a crowdfunding platform because what they've got that we don't have is they've got reach. You know, they've got you know, people who, who subscribe to their newsletters who maybe don't even come at all from the whiskey world or, or the beer world. You know, they just look to invest in, in double glazing or, I don't know, organic onions. I have no idea. You know, but, you know, we have to, you know, open it up to, to, to as many people as possible. Uh, and to say to people, look, you know, you can come on board and read the business plan. You don't know anything about whiskey or, or beer. It doesn't matter. You know, read the business plan. And maybe you think as a, as, a, as, a, as a savvy investor, do you know what? I think I might put a few hundred pounds into that, you know, uh, or, a, or maybe a couple of thousand or whatever. Spread, you're spreading your risk, I guess. Uh, so the answer is, of course, uh, we will keep you updated. It will probably be at the end of the year. I don't think it's appropriate. I mean, it, 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 it kills me to say this because we're losing time. Um, our initial business plan, uh, we can smile now, but was to have uh, uh, certainly beer production in place for next year's fish. Now, that's not going to happen. Um, uh, I, there's planning to go through. I mean, we've gone through pre-planning, however, and I'd have had no objections. And one of the interesting things, perhaps, for potential shareholders here, guys, is that we are an existing business. So we're moving that business. Um, we are uh, uh, safeguarding employment and trying to increase employment. But, of course, again, this is nuts and bolts stuff, perhaps a bit more technical, but local authorities in Scotland look very favourably upon existing businesses that are trying to grow. It's not the same as being Sikinder Singh and coming to Isla and trying to put in a new distillery and, and the council's going, but you know, who are you and where do you come? What's the, what's the point of this? And you know, what do we get back from it? If you're trying to, to safeguard and develop an existing business, then you generally get a more favorable uh, year uh, for your project, which is for shareholders maybe an interesting tiny detail. So small answer, uh, probably uh, uh, third quarter at the earliest, this will go live and rest assured the first people we're going to talk to uh, will be the, uh, the Isla Scotch Society. I mean, you know, who else, you know, and maybe you want to go for it, maybe you don't. But what we would ask you to do is perhaps share it with, with friends and family and say, listen, guys, you know, have a look at this. You know, what do I know? You know, um, for sure. No, 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 that uh, sounds great. And it's good to know that you guys are going through this in a deliberate way and doing your due diligence, uh, especially with the crowd. Uh, funding part of it. So that's encouraging. Yeah. Um, okay. So at this point, I'm going to uh, open up the floor to any questions. If anybody has questions, instead of writing them, just yeah. uh, okay. unmute your mic one by one. And, uh, you know, the floor is open. I just want to make sure that you guys get a chance to ask Donald any questions. Uh, so for five minutes, I open the floor. If anybody has questions, please jump in now. If you have no questions, then we will move on uh, with our conversation. So anybody? Uh, I've got another question. Um, Go for it. Go for it. About, uh, uh, you know, the, the brewery distillery um, uh, hybrid model. Um, I know here in the States, Fritz Maytag at Anchor and Old Potrero or Anchor Distilling, and Sam Calzone at Dogfish Head, uh, you know, both brewing beer and also distilling spirits. Do you have any models in mind for, uh, you know, a company or, uh, or a, a master distiller, master brewer, uh, who you take as inspiration or a model? Um, it's a good question. Um, I think quite often what we've found is that uh, sometimes it was hybrid. Well, I don't know about 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 Anchor, and I wouldn't want to comment, Alex. But certainly in Scotland, I know that BrewDog, uh, very successful uh, beer company, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, here's a fun fact: uh, our packaging um, uh, was done by the same company that the BrewDog beers, um, because we were a big fan, a big fan of BrewDog Punk IPA. I mean, what a great beer, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember, you know, the pop punk music, you know. Uh, and so, so, um, but I'm just not sure sometimes that they, they quite 
get the the thing quite right. It's either either they're either beer guys or the whiskey guys, you know. Um, and sometimes it doesn't seem to just quite work out so well. Um, so we're careful of that. But what we are doing is taking uh, um, uh, taking uh, knowledge and information from from people that uh, that do know what they're talking about. Um, interestingly, I think perhaps for us, for me and Mackay, naturally he's become uh, the master brewer. Uh, or the head brewer, rather, master brewers. These word masters are a little bit, a little bit, a little bit scary. He's the head brewer in the brewery, and he he's the guy with the recipes. Um, and it was new to him. Um, I'm probably just naturally more inclined to be the the, the whiskey guy because whiskey is, like, I guess, my my kick. Uh, just that's just the way it is. Uh, having said that, you know, um, uh, talking about Williams Brothers earlier on, uh, one of the team mentioned Williams Brothers. I can't remember who it was. One of the guys, um, Scott Williams, uh, was it you, Chris? Um, Scott Williams as uh, as a friend of ours. Um, well, he's a, he's also well. He was first of all a business partner. Um, um, I guess, you know, a lot of it is about, and I think, I'd, I think I'll probably be the same thing. It's about relationships. Um, and, and I, I've worked for a long time in France, curiously, because I speak French, um, selling whiskey. And that's part of the question to me about, about Brouclade. I used to sell Brouclade whiskey in, in, in France. Uh, 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 and I wasn't too bad at it but because I was selling whiskey. Every bottle I sold, I had the impression that, I was kind of, this sounds maybe a, bit, a little bit, uh, perhaps a little bit um, romantic, but I had the impression that I was helping somebody's job somewhere back in the You know, I mean, it's a bit pretentious, but it kind of motivated me. Um, anyway, moving on from that. Um, we, uh, so Scott's come, Scott's come on board as, as a shareholder um, and obviously as, as t- tremendous uh, advice on everything beer related. I mean, uh, Williams Brothers in Scotland, uh, guys, just so as you know, it's Scotland's biggest uh, uh, independent or craft brewer. It's huge. And Scott and his brother built that from nothing, from their dad's one uh, craft beer shop. Uh, and, uh, and and his recipes are really good. His skills are really good. And really, also, he's a, he's a, do you know what? He's a really nice guy. You know? And I'm at an age where I need to work with people that I actually like. You know that I got on with, and I got on with Scott, and 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 Mackay got on with him for the beer, and he's been really good to us. And a detail of that is you know, we bottle with him, um, uh, which a lot of people do in Scotland. We don't have a bottling line's a nightmare, um, mm-hmm. and um, we, we did it a holding tank uh, of three thousand liters. He said, "Well, guys, I've got one sitting doing nothing. Just have it. There you go, free charge." Um, and it was just a generous gesture. He said, "I don't need it. Just you know, just come and pick it up, you know, and and, and use it. Fine." Um, and it was really good. I, I, I remember these little kind gestures of kindness. And, and interestingly, we're, we, our Jim McEwen, you know, back to Jim. Um, you know, we, we talked to Jim um, and, uh, you know, Jim loves, again, you know, the Isla thing, you know, he, he's all for it, you know. Uh, and and to, so I, I, I would kind of hope that Jim would have a look at our, our, our spirit profiles and uh, see what he's got to say. Uh, on, on that so um, yeah it's an interesting challenge though Alex because you know beer and whiskey together and maybe a rum as well you know Jesus you know uh, um, it's quite, it quite a challenge you know but I think within the company I, I think well, I'm hoping we can pull it off you know uh, uh, but you're right it's, a, it's an interesting challenge and philosophies kind of sometimes clash because you're a beer guy or a whiskey guy but I think because we're kind of both uh, at the start I think it's maybe we're trickier when you're beer for a, a decade and you, and you integrate spirits as a learning curve, maybe it's a bit, a bit tricky, or vice versa. But because we're going at this right from the start, I'm hopeful that both uh, uh, lines of products can can live and, and thrive. Uh, it's 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 a, it's it's maybe a big bet, you know. But hey, I'm quietly confident. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that answer. Uh, I'll take one more question from the floor. Anybody else on uh, online want to ask uh, Donald a question? Here's the chance, and after that, uh, we'll. <laughs> Move on with our conversation to where because we do have a time limitation as well. Sure. Any other questions? Good stuff. Okay, great. Uh, I guess uh, no more questions. So you talked about uh, Jim McEwen. Can you and and you you've you've kind of alluded to the fact that you know, you look. He's an Isla uh, uh, person. He'll look to help you know help you maybe throughout the process that. Can you talk about your work experience? Like, how did you, how how were you tra- trained by Jim? And what kind of training did you receive? And 
what makes you, uh, you know, the person you are now and, uh, yep. and from uh, the influence you've picked up with Jim? Well, you know, it's a, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good question. It's a great question. It's, and it's, I'm afraid it's going to be a long answer, so, so you might all want to go to your beds. But uh, uh, no, I'm joking. But it's, I, I, I came into industry uh, late on. Uh, it's probably been, uh, what, are you 20? It's been probably 11, 12 years now. So not that long. I used to be a printer. Uh, back in the day, uh, of all things, <laughs> um, and uh, printing technology, of course, moved on and, and left me in a desert island, high and dry behind us. Um, and you know, I, as as I was getting older, I kind of wanted to do a job that, uh, you know, I, I was keen on doing a job that involved, um, I guess, passion, um, because as we all know, uh, what's that saying again? If you find something, if you find a job you love, then you'll never work another day in your life. You know. Um, and so obviously I was a, a whiskey, you know, a whiskey, a whiskey, a whiskey guy, you know, I grew up with whiskey all my life. Um, you know, my dad, you know, helped the local economy very, very, a very great deal. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, I grew up with it and uh, I was uh, a French wife living in France and, uh, uh, and I managed to, um, I managed to uh, get a master's degree in import, uh, import, export. Uh, management done, um, and I did a I did a thesis on uh, uh, premium spirit, uh, whiskey versus cognac. And uh, I kind of wondered. I thought maybe I could get a job working for a French company. I speak French quite well, uh, exporting or a Scottish company importing. Um, and I ended up working for a French uh, distributor um, as their whiskey guy uh, because I was from Isla. You know, you're from Isla. People think you know all about whiskey. Um, um, I knew quite a lot. I grew up with it. You know, I mean, my first memories as a, as a small boy, I like it, being on the peat bank with my dad and cutting peats for, for the fire at home. You know, and, and you grew up with whiskey. It's all around you. I mean, I used to go to Black Rock Farm, uh, 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 Donald McCormick Sr. and his son runs a farm today and he was at school with me. And I used to go there on the weekends to, to their, their farm. I'd probably be five, six, seven, eight, nine. They were just wee kids, you know. Um, and we'd go and get draft in his father's uh, truck uh, from Cowley to the Cellar. Uh, and, and, and fill the lorry up with draft and drive that back, you know, steaming draft for the cattle. So you, you kind of grow up all around it. You know, and I was in Bamore, you know, so you've got smells of whiskey in the process. If you go to the school at Bamore, you go past the distillery every day, you know, four times a day, you know, up and back for lunch, and then back up again, and back down again. And you're going upside along to the distillery, you're going through, up, all up through the process, because the process is vertical. You know, it's barley from the fields in at the top and, 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 and whiskey out at the bottom, and you go down each, each floor, you know, uh, each process, you know, including malting, malting barley and peat smoke and spirit smells. And all that. So you kind of learn an island by osmosis. But anyway, uh, I needed formal training. So um, because at the time the French company was, uh, uh, had just taken on Brewer Clady, I, I knew the guys. And so I phoned them and said, I've got this job with this company and I'd like to learn more formally. So I managed to get a place on the, uh, I think it was the second last Brewer Clady Academy. Um, which was a, a, a week-long academy. Of course, I didn't just stay there. I stayed at mom, you know, mom and dad's house, which was like two miles away. Um, and they took, I guess, good care of me. Um, mainly because I was, I was a local boy, you know. Um, I, didn't, I ended up not even paying for it. Um, and, um, and, and it was great. It was really good. And so I learned the process uh, formally from Jim. Jim was... Uh, was hands-on there was only four of us or three of us it was very hands-on and it was great and I went back to that French company to sell Brooklady whiskey which was fantastic because I knew the process inside out and it was all my friends that worked there anyway um I mean for those of you who know Duncan Budgie the still man in Brooklady he's quite a character over there uh, as a small boy I used to well as a teenager rather I used to work in the Isla Creamery which made cheese back in the day it's gone now I'm afraid um, and he was one of the guys in the team so I've known him since I was 16 um, went to school with his little sister you know uh, but anyway so that was the so I came into the, the the industry from not so much the process as the the coal face which is selling the stuff now you know, I would say that's probably the most important. If you look at an interview that Anthony Wills did on on on, on Colhoman, and and uh, a few years ago now, um, and it, and it said to Anthony, what, what what's the most important thing, Anthony? You know, that you would lo- like want to to to, to tell people uh, about about the whiskey industry. And he said, well, it's get distribution, <laughs> because if you don't have distribution, there's no point making the best whiskey in the world if no one can sell it for you. Um, and so I come into the the. 
I suppose my own company with Mackay, uh, with a, a very very long experience of knocking on whiskey shop doors uh, selling whiskey, um, and that creates a network of people who know you, and you know maybe you know hopefully trust you to a certain extent, or at least you know develop a relationship where it's got to be I mean, you know business has to be based on trust, right? Um, it has to be. Uh, you can't lie to people. You can do it short term, but it's not going to work long term. Um, that's a base on trust. And it also gives me, I suppose, I guess, a, 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 a fairly lucid, I would hope, view of things like pricing uh, 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 and packaging and, and you know, and, and brand storytelling and all that sort of stuff, which, is, which are absolutely essential uh, to making something a success in the marketplace. I mean, you can make, again, the best spirit in the world, but if you're a fairly introspective whiskey geek making this great spirit and can't go and sell it, I'm sorry, you're stuffed. You know, um, so I come into it again from the, the, the trade point of view. Um, but that gave me the chance to taste lots and lots of whiskies uh, from all around Scotland and the world. And I guess that over the years, it kind of helps you to understand how flavour profiles work and, um, and how you react to them um, and how customers react to them, you know, uh, maybe too. So there you go. So a lot of coal, coal face you know, chipping away, you know, uh, uh, at that coal face, which has been really, really good. I've really enjoyed it. Um, an awful lot of mileage done in my Land Rover around France, I can tell you, uh, and the rest of Europe, uh, as it turns out. Um, so there you go. I came into it that way. Oh, okay. Having said that, my father did work for Lager Woolen. I mean, he was a painter. He painted the walls, but still. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's a great background. And I must say, I mean, you've got, uh, you've checked off all the boxes uh, as far as, uh, you know, I'm concerned, you know, somebody who's local, somebody who spent time and uh, knows how the distribution works. And, but you seem to have a great business partner in place. And yeah. uh, so, I mean, all those things combined, uh, you know, I, I feel good about it. And, uh, you know, we're all here to support you. And hopefully in the coming days, uh, once you put that crowd uh, funding uh, thing together, you know, we'll be jumping on that opportunity and at least I will be, uh, you know, just to stake a claim. And so the next time I visit Isla, I can come to, down to your shed and actually, you know, yep, get to that's right. talk to you guys yes. and see what's going on. Yeah. And, come, and see, uh, come and see your company. How's it doing? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give you a tough time. Like you're not sure, working. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. You know, that I think that's what shareholders should do. You know, <laughs> how are you spending my money? You know, what have you spent it on? You know, am I getting a bang for my buck? I mean, to be honest, I'll be asking the same questions. <laughs> okay, uh, with that, I mean, we're coming to a close here. Uh, we had scheduled for 90 minutes. Uh, a lot of you have. Uh, logged in or calling in from uh, uh, Europe uh, and all over the places. Uh, so, you know, being mindful of your time and uh, the ones who are in the US, it's afternoon and it's a sunny day, at least in DC, it's good weather. Uh, so, and uh, you know, we'll be looking to get out there even though we're in a lockdown, but you know, when weather yeah. is good, you want to get out. Uh, on a parting note, uh, Donald, do you want to say anything uh, else uh, just to close off the conversation? Anything which you may have uh, missed out on earlier or anything just uh, for all of us? Uh, what's the best way to, you know, stay connected with you or find out what, what are the new developments? You can, you can um, hit me up on, on, on Facebook, I guess. Um, uh, I mean, I mean, I've been admitted to the to the to the face group uh, group as well, so you can get my details on there. Uh, I would really like to just to shout out to my business partner uh, Mac, um, for short, Mackay Mackay Smith. He's on Isla as we speak. Um, the brewery were doing home deliveries, um, contactless payment, and and doing home deliveries of growlers of beer, an American format, of course. Um, and uh, trying to react the best we can to changing uh, uh, market uh, uh, situation. Um, and he's driving our van around Isla as we speak, uh, delivering beer to, to, to Isla residents, which I think is, which is, which is great. Uh, as soon as I can get over, uh, once I can get out of lockdown, I'll be over there too, doing the same thing, cleaning the bottles, you know, filling them up, uh, whatever. Um, but I wanted to say a big shout out to Mac because 
I, I firmly believe in any company that, that, that ideally one plus one should equal three. Uh, and I think with Mackay, you know, I'm really lucky to have him. And I think one plus one equals five in so, far, in so much as I'm one and he's four. Uh, uh, but, but I really want to shout out to him uh, because a lot of the time uh, he's doing a shitload of work um, in lockdown on Isla on his own. And I'm, I'm, I, I would love to be there with him, uh, helping him as we speak. But hey, uh, big shout out to Mackay, um, who's the brains perhaps behind the operation. Uh, so without him, it wouldn't, wouldn't be there. There you are. No, oh, great. And then in the coming days, we would love to hear from uh, you and uh, Makai as well. If uh, you know, as things progress, uh, they we have another conversation, virtual conversation with the, the group here. Uh, uh, you know, as we move closer to uh, your crowdfunding uh, stage of the project, and uh, you know, we wish you all the best. Uh, we the one thing which I say, and I say this, uh, you know, proudly that. We all love Isla whiskey, but more than that, we also love uh, Isla itself, the people and the, the love and hospitality we get when we visit Isla. So, you know, any, any way which we can support uh, the local community, I, you know, try to do that. And because, you know, you, you have to respect the, the people who work in the industry. And to me, no matter who owns the distilleries, yes, it makes a difference if it's owned by a local, res, you know, Isla person that makes a big difference but they it, the workers and those just are either isla uh, people and they work hard and they, you know and and i try to make sure that we they know that we appreciate all the hard work which goes into it so um thanks for this opportunity i think it was a great conversation uh, we'll put up the recording for the ones who could not make it and uh, hope to stay in touch with you and hear about all your uh, good work with the uh, your uh, Lagan Bay uh, distillery and the crowdfunding and uh, cannot wait to get, be a part of uh, your uh, distillery. Thank well, you. Listen, can I th just say thanks to you, Tema, and thanks to all of you for, uh, for taking with me there. <laughs> so, uh, perhaps a big, long, uh, long rambling conversation, you know. Uh, but listen, it's been great. Um, and I'm really, really uh, so pleased you reached out to me because, um, again, we're just two, two wee guys and and not very well known, you know. Um, but hey, thanks to everybody for, for, for checking in. It's been really good. And if you can find just a last request, sorry, if you have local distribution, wherever you are, um, or if you know anybody who, who might want to, to, to talk to me about our whiskeys, uh, then tell them to get in touch. <laughs> no, no, and we do actually. So there are people oh, well, yeah. on the state side. I know uh, they, I have a couple of connections and I can uh, talk to you offline and maybe connect you with those people and we would love to see some of your, uh, even Isla Ales, you know, the beer, uh, the, the amount of, uh, I guess, love we have is anything Isla, we would, you know, I, I would rather have an Isla Ale with my uh, whiskey, which I often do. I taste my whiskey with beer. I do that. So I would rather do it with uh, a good Isla Ale, uh, you know, than uh, with something else. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll connect with you and, you know, share uh, the contacts I have. Sure. Well, that's, that's great. In fact, everybody, uh, stay safe, obviously, uh, with Sabine and, and Rainer. We, we, we all want to see you back on Isla, you know, once, um, once, once it's possible. I mean, um, you know, Isla, Isla needs, I think, its, um, its fans. It needs the emotional uh, commitment of, of those who are fond of Isla. Um, Isla needs people to, to come back and walk its beaches. Uh, uh, and drink its whiskey for sure, but more than anything, to come back and, and enjoy the, the the wild beauty of the place. And I agree with you on that, Tamar. You know, Isla is much more, of course, as we all know about about just the whiskey. It's about you know this, the, the the island. It's about the community. It's about the geology, the geography, the weather. It's a it's a big mix um, of which whiskey is a part for sure, but not the only part. Um, and once people understand that, I think it actually makes the whiskeys taste a lot better. <laughs> it does, it does. And, and you know in this conversation which was unstructured uh, I learned a lot about history and I figured out that that you for one know a lot about your history and so I really love the way you've uh, named your bottles and the brand and the flap knows that it's amazing so you know you live and learn and uh, I, when I'm on next time I'm on Ola I'm going to be hitting you up and you know I want to hear more come of on those. in come on in <laughs>
Yeah. Come on into the brewery and grab a beer. We'll sit and talk about it. <laughs> we'll do that. We'll do that. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for Thanks, joining. Uh, thanks, Donald. Uh, for that, we say goodbye. And until uh, next time, cheers. Cheers. Bye, folks. Cheers.